I've been hearing rumors about a Parkinson's vaccine, and I thought, wait, vaccine for Parkinson's? This can't be real. But here's the thing. It is real. Two vaccines called UB312 and ACI7104 are in clinical trials right now, and they could stop Parkinson's before it even starts. Yes, really. The early results are making me really excited. Now, let me explain what's happening because this is kind of wild. I'm Kim. I spent years caring for my mom who had Parkinson's disease. I lost my mom about a year ago, and since then I've been obsessively uh, researching the disease and I'm bringing these videos so that I can bring hope to those currently dealing with the disease. When I first heard about these vaccines, I was pretty skeptical, but after digging into the research, I'm genuinely hopeful. Today, I'm breaking down how these vaccines work, what the trials show, and when they might be available. Okay, so Parkinson's right now is the fastest growing neurological disease in the world. About 10 million people currently have it. And by the year 2050, that number will hit 25 million. But what frustrates me is right now we have nothing to stop the disease. Current medications help with symptoms, but they don't stop what's happening in the brain. By the time someone passes away, they've lost 50 to 70% of the specific brain cell. And we're just, what, watching it happen? So when I heard about vaccines that might actually stop this disease, I had to know more. To understand why a vaccine might work, you need to know what goes wrong in Parkinson's. It comes down to one protein, alpha-synuclein. In a healthy brain, this protein is totally normal. It's in your neurons right now helping them communicate. But in Parkinson's, it starts to misfold and clump together, kind of like paper clips all sticking together. These clumps eventually form massive globs called Lewy bodies that literally strangle brain cells to death. These toxic clumps can spread from cell to cell like an infection, which is why Parkinson's just gets worse and worse progressively over time. Now, here's what sealed this whole thing for scientists. About 10 to 20% of Parkinson's cases run in families. That means they're genetic. So they looked into the genes and what did they find? Mutations in the gene that makes the alpha-synuclein. That protein, alpha-synuclein, is the problem. So the question becomes, can we train the immune system to recognize these toxic clumps and clear them out before they kill more neurons? That's where the vaccine comes in. There are two vaccines showing some real promise right now, UB312 and ACI7104. I'm going to give you the exciting highlights of each one first and then break one down, then break them down a little bit more in detail. So UB312, this vaccine reduced toxic protein by 20% and improved people's motor function in just six months. The study included 20 patients. Of the 20, 7 got the placebo and 13 got the actual medication. 12 out of the 13 patients developed antibodies, which shows that the immune system responds to the vaccine, which is great. And 5 of those 13 developed antibodies that crossed into the brain, which is huge. Very few medications cross the blood-brain barrier, so this is big deal. And those with the highest levels that got into the brain could button shirts easier, could write more clearly, they had better movement, they had real improvements in daily life. The results just got published in Nature Medicine, which is one of the most prestigious medical journals. Now, AC7104 had 100% response rate. Every single person made antibodies and strong ones, 20 times higher than the placebo. The FDA gave it fast-track designation, which they only do when something shows serious potential. In the next few months, we'll see if those antibodies are clearing out toxic protein. And if it looks good, they're going to expand to 150 patients. Now let me break down how each one of these works. Um, okay, let's talk about UB312 first. Think of it like a wanted poster for your immune system. They inject a small piece of the toxic alpha-synuclein protein into your body. And your immune system goes, oh, that's bad. Let me attack it. 
The clever part about this is that the antibodies target the toxic clumped version, but leave the natural, normal protein alone. It's like teaching a guard dog to attack burglars, but leave house guests alone. The trial results. In 2019, they had 50 healthy volunteers that they gave the medication to to see if it was safe. Then they moved to 20 people with early Parkinson's in 2022. 92% developed the antibodies. That was the 12 of the 13 that actually got the medication. And of those 13, 5, which is 38%, had the antibodies show up in their brain fluid. Like I said, this is the critical part about this. Uh, Toxic protein levels dropped by 20%. Patients with the brain antibodies showed significant improvement in daily tasks. The side effects were mild. Headaches, sore arms, some fatigue, no serious problems. Right now, they're planning phase two trials with bigger groups and longer follow-up. If all goes well, they'll have to decide if they are going to proceed with a phase three trial or not. You know, they're very expensive. If all goes well, they'll have to make the decision about proceeding to phase three trials or not. These pharmaceutical companies really have to just take things one step at a time, one phase at a time. Okay, so now let's talk about AC7104. Similar concept, but uses a synthetic peptide that mimics the toxic part. It's like showing your immune system a sketch instead of a photo. The vaccine has a longer history than you might think. It actually started development over 10 years ago under different names, PD-01A and PD-03A, by an Austrian company called Aferis. They ran early trials showing it was safe and could generate antibodies. In 2021, AC Immune acquired the technology, optimized it, and created ACI-7104. So this isn't some brand new untested idea. It's been refined over a decade with multiple trials showing safety in both Parkinson's patients and people with related disorders. The early trials were promising. One showed antibody levels increased sixfold, and a post-analysis found a 51% reduction in toxic protein in brain fluid. But drug drug development but Drug development takes forever. Each phase requires years of data collection, analysis, funding, and regulatory approval. So now it's finally in its big phase two trial, which started in July of 2023. And this is where it gets kind of exciting. So the results so far, 100% of patients made antibodies, not just some of them, all of them. Antibodies were 20 times higher than the placebo after just four doses. Their side effects were mild, injection site soreness, some headaches. They received the FDA fast track designation, which is a huge vote of confidence. So the fast track means that the FDA thinks this has serious potential and will speed up the review process if the data keeps looking good. Okay, so what's next? Well, we're currently waiting on the data to see what the antibodies are actually doing inside the brain. If this data looks good in late 2025, which is basically right now, they expect to expand to 150 patients. The trial is expected to complete in 2028. The fact that this vaccine survived over a decade of development, multiple trials, company changes, and now in phase two with FDA backing, Tells you it's got real staying power. A lot of candidates die along the way, but this one keeps advancing. Okay, I'm going to talk real quickly about the science behind it, just so you understand. Your immune system is like a security force, constantly looking for threats. The problem, alpha-synuclein is supposed to be in your body. It's normal. It's natural. So your immune system ignores it, even when it becomes toxic. These vaccines break that tolerance. They show your immune system the toxic version and say, hey, when it looks like this, all clumped up, you need to attack it. The antibodies circulate in your blood. Some cross into your brain and they act like a cleanup crew, constantly finding and tagging those toxic clumps for removal. So why we want to use vaccines instead of lab made antibodies? Good question. Some treatments give you lab 
made antibodies through IV infusions, but those break down in weeks. You need monthly infusions forever at thousands of dollars each. For a 20-year disease, that's millions of dollars per patient. Vaccines train your body to make the antibodies. So instead of getting them injected, your body's creating them. Maybe you need a booster every year or two, but that's it. Way cheaper, way more practical, easier, and could actually be distributed worldwide. Now, I'm going to be honest, does it work? Well, the good news is, for the first time ever, we're reducing the toxic protein causing the disease. That 20% reduction isn't just a number. It's proof the concept works. We're attacking the root cause, not just the symptoms. Some patients showed real improvement in daily function, buttoning shirts, writing, moving better, real improvements in real lives. But what we don't know yet, because this is a very small trial, both of them, like this UB312 only had 20 patients, and we only have 6 to 12 months of data, not years worth. Not everyone responded equally in that UB312 trial. Only 38% had antibodies and brain fluid. And will these benefits last? How often do you need boosters? We need hundreds of patients in phase two, thousands of patients in phase three before we really know. So here's a timeline and reality check just so you get an idea. The time, the timing seems frustrating and seems like it takes forever. But if you've watched my previous few videos, in those I explain why each phase takes so long and why each phase is so important and the why this process is crucial to the safety of each and every patient. Even if everything goes perfectly, phase two trials take two to four years. Phase three trials take three to five years. Regulatory approval could take a year or two. So the realistic availability of either of these vaccines, 2030, 2032, maybe 2035, at the earliest. So that's even if everything works, which it often doesn't. You know, some things, there's kinks in the road they have to work out. But many drugs look amazing in phase one, and they still fail in phase two or phase three. So there's no guarantee. Well, I will say is these vaccines definitely won't cure advanced Parkinson's. They won't bring back dead neurons. They won't work for everyone. And they're not going to be available next year or probably even in the next three or four years. What they might do, however, is slow progression significantly, turn a 20-year disease into a 40-year disease. Though it's going to slow the progression for sure. Um, it will keep people functional and independent longer, buy time for better treatments. So this is still huge, but it's not a miracle cure. So should we be excited? Yes, definitely. But with measured optimism, the vaccines are real. They're in clinical trials with real patients showing real results. The science makes sense. The early data is promising. And for the first time in Parkinson's history, we have a rational way to potentially stop progression. But we're really years away from them being available. And we don't know yet if they'll live up to their promise. If you want to help, look into clinical trials near you. Clinicaltrials.gov. There's a lot of them in there. Talk to your neurologist about upcoming trials. They may know some that you might be eligible for. Um, donate to organizations like the Michael J. Falk, Michael J. Fox Foundation. Um, and stay informed. You know, subscribe to my channel because I'm going to keep updating the information on everything that I find. So um, make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to click like if you uh, enjoyed this video or you learned something new. That'd be great. Things are moving really fast, so we need to stay on top of it. My take? Well, I'm more hopeful than usual. The mechanism makes sense. The target is clear. The data is strong. And we have multiple vaccines being tested. So we're learning even if one of them doesn't work out. The Parkinson's vaccine rumors are true. Real scientists, real trials, real result. They're not ready yet. Might not work for everyone. It's going to take some time. But we can finally see a future where Parkinson's might be treatable, which is huge. I'm going to keep covering this as data comes in. So... Don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, share it with people who may need this information or who um, are dealing with Parkinson's and would just like a little bit of hope. Thanks so much for watching. Um, we're not there yet, but I can see the future and I think it's brighter than ever.
Take care of yourself and take care of others. And we'll see you in the next video.